What up, everybody? This is Chef Jack Harris at the uh, Talk Team Podcast. Welcome to Real Talk, by the way. I'm with our uh, two buddies from Compass, two CPAs, Edward Montagudo and Matthew Patton. Edward is CPA, been at Compass for almost two years. He is, before that, prior to that, he was an insurance manager at Ernst & Young about a year and a half. And before that, he was a senior auditor at Ernst & Young. He is a graduate of undergraduate and business school, uh, both at Vanderbilt University, so he is a, a Vandy grad, but not a Jay Cutler fan. <laughs> and he is, he got his CPA in the state of Tennessee, 2014. Matthew Patton, Matt is a longtime Compass yes. colleague. He's been with us for two years and seven months. One year as an accounting manager, and prior to that, an accounting associate for about two years. He's also a CPA, and uh, prior to Compass, he was working at we were working at a, a government a department of energy in Chicago, right? Uh, a little, yeah. So before that, I was at a marketing startup called Closer Look in Chicago. Oh, just a small right. like 100, 150 person company. Mm -hmm. Before that, for about five years, I was at with the federal government, the Department of Energy. Department of Energy, right? Yeah, yeah. In there. And you were there for what? Two years? Three years? The Department of Energy. energy yeah. I was there for a while. That was my. I was the there for almost five years. So I, I was an intern there in college. Stayed full time. Mm -hmm. Around year five, moved to the private industry and got the job. At, got my first taste at startup life. But. How did you find Compass? Or so you, I found Compass because the startup in Chicago I was working at wasn't it wasn't doing so well, and uh -huh. so it was time to kind of be worried, start looking, and. I wanted to move to New York, and so I was living in Chicago, wanted to move to New York, started looking for jobs. I, I was looking, there's a website called Built In, where they have a lot of these like techie startup jobs that you can find, and so I, I really just found Compass through there, and the, the real, the full story is that I applied for a job for Compass. They had massive layoffs at, at my, my previous <laughs> oh, company. No. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, they literally laid off like a 30% of the whole company because of how bad things were going there. So I got laid off. The day I got laid off, Luong Hung from the recruiting team reached out to me. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and yeah. I started the interview process the same day. Mm. I got laid off my other job and and didn't really, Compass was really new. They weren't even yep. in Chicago at the yep. time. I just knew it was a place that seemed like it had a great culture, a great startup, yep. doing big things. And about a month later, I was living in New York. Nice. And, uh, How, what was the process? Was it, did you think the process was difficult at all? The interview process? Yeah. It was long and it was a little, it was kind of hard because it was uh, all through uh, phone it, or like, phone interviews, like video yeah. interviews. Yeah. So interview with a lot of people who aren't here anymore. Uh, yeah, Craig Glasgow, Natalie Vitebsky, David Snyder all interviewed oh, me. Man. The hardest one was David Snyder who was the CFO at the time. He would ask in the, the interview, he was asking like mental math questions. So he put together like, do this percentage or this percentage. And it was all like, uh, the real life example of like a deal, right? So if the company's getting X percentage and the agent's getting this percentage, but we're getting, it, it was kind of like breaking it down and be like, how much well, bring do it down know? even more. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, if I can remember, so it was like, let's say um, you, the listing, the, comp the fee on the listing is uh, is $100,000 okay. and the agent's getting an 80% split okay. uh, and then of that compass, so what percent, simple things like what percentage is going to compass, what percentage is going to that, but then to be breaking down even farther, so let's say the agent has to pay off a certain portion to their team sure. or, okay. and maybe it was like a 5% thing and then there was uh, um, what's on a list, on a deal when there's someone who has a, uh, a referral fee going on yep. and so okay. there's that percentage. I can't remember the exact example, but I remember breaking down the answer and walking it through and luckily at the time, I guess I was, you know, I felt like I was in the zone because Snyder was really pushing it and yeah. Uh, Good. yeah, it worked out well. Like I'm in the driver's seat. Yeah. Did, did you... Did you get the breakdown correct? Was I did. Good? I did. I think I impressed him. Were you I mean, like on the computer, like on the, the calculator? No, but I remember asking. He, he laid out all the questions. I'm like, can I write it all down? And I wrote down all the numbers and the percentages he was using and kind of just like talked oh, yeah, through yeah. my math. I think, um, you know, it, it definitely, it, it's not that the questions were particularly hard. It's more that if you're the type of person who's going to kind of freeze up under that. Because it is the CFO of, of the job you want uh, asking you these questions. So, yeah, yeah, there's a level of just like anxiety. A little, a little, bit, of, little bit of pressure. Yeah. yeah. Good. You're, you're a high performer under high pressure. Yeah. That's good. How about you? So, Compass found me actually. Um, oh, nice. 
a recruiter reached out to me. Uh, yeah. This is our internal guys. Or? Actually, an external recruiter. Um, it's, it's actually the same recruiter who's probably filled out like 90% of the finance team at this point. But yeah, they reached out to me, and it was kind of the same time that Series E was happening. So I was like, oh, yeah. I wasn't really looking, but Series E seemed really exciting. So yeah. I came in, met the same group of people that Matt mentioned, uh -huh. liked everybody, went well, came back for another meeting, came back for another meeting, um, and it just all worked out. It just, a lot of interviews. A lot, a lot of interviews, case studies. Did you get the same uh, questions that... So David Snyder was gone, gone by that point, then, so it was yeah. Craig Anderson. Craig Anderson also has a unique interview style, uh -huh. um, but yeah, it just kept going well, and I enjoyed everyone I met, and it just seemed really exciting to join a... You know, tech startup. Tech startup. Um, so small, I just, small company on the rise. Yeah. Well, you're being modest because now you had to do a case study, which is a more, much more official version of what David Snyder did. And then, like, uh, on, the, on the fly phone. It's a presentation. He had to do a presentation yeah. on a topic. So. Yeah, so it was like a yeah. uh, technical accounting subject about, like, our ec Compass's equity. Okay. And I just had to do a little presentation for Craig Anderson, who was a CFO at the time, Craig Glasgow, who was the controller. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it went. I think it was actually the the question was right up my alley, it's like basically based on a paper I already had done at my old job. What kind of question was it? So I don't want to bore anybody on your oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, uh, please. Just a general yeah, overview. Right? Um, well, when you give equity to people, um, you have to take expense for that equity, mm -hmm. and there's some estimates that you have to do because we're valuing stock that doesn't really, it doesn't really exist really in the market yeah. at the moment. Really liquid, yeah. And so just kind of like going through, walking through people how you would do that, how you would estimate um, forfeitures, like the number of agents and employees that would leave in any given period, mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. So just mm -hmm. kind of walking them through that process. I luckily already had all that work done for my previous did you, job. Did you do that at UI? Were you, were you, were you auditing or consulting other agents, agencies that did not have equity that was yet yeah, liquid? liquid? Um, it was actually I at EY I uh, audited public companies and I mm -hmm. focused on actually investment banks and in a similar way like the traders and the brokers at these investment banks mm -hmm. um, get equity kind of a similar way to like the Asian equity program yeah and so there's just a lot of that technical aspect I just kind of already had that understanding yeah. it's just a little bit of a change just the the private set, setting just a little bit of how we talk about it but it's, uh, other than that it's pretty similar. That's, that's, yeah, that's where. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of the brokers, the challenge of uh, them joining is they don't understand exactly what I'm very that familiar is. with that issue. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what equity is. Yeah. They've never even had an opportunity to even be a partner with with a company that gives out quote yeah. equity. So oh, for sure. That's, I think it's a very foreign matter. Uh, back to Matt, what what are you doing uh, right now? What kind of projects are you currently working on? So my my big focus now, I have kind of two. It's one is I'm kind of managing the month end close process. So uh -huh. really just all any all the numbers, a lot of data flowing to compass in a lot of different directions, right? Sure. Between closing deals, paying out agents, just keeping the lights on, paying out the traditional like eight accounts payable paying things, rent. paying rent, <laughs> paying IT expenses, paying for all these software services we're using, yeah. all these consultants we're using, legal fees, all that stuff kind of making sure it flows into the all our systems and our ultimate the accounting system in yeah. a logical way, in a sensible way, and it's yeah. a lot of review and kind of diving through the details that the team is doing goes into the numbers that we ultimately are presenting to investors and to leadership and so that's a very like time intensive process because we, we're under a tight deadline right yeah. I mean Robert Mayel they expect us to get the numbers of how we did in a previous month previous quarter yeah. uh, so our current process we do it between 10 and 12 business days mm -hmm. and so that's just like first day of the month it's kind of a head the team's in a head down sprints to make sure that happens mm -hmm. and I'm kind of involved in some of the process there but also just more overseeing the process it involves me a lot of times just following a tracker and, and going up to someone's desk and be like why haven't you done this yet uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of it's been us butts, having meetings and yeah. in, in making sure everyone's on the same page and everyone's aware of certain deadlines or if they have specific issues that they're dealing with that they think they're going to miss a deadline like how can we figure that out what's, um, our, what's our biggest expense right now That's outside of like personnel it's aside from the the, what we call COGS, like cost of goods sold, which is essentially commission expense. Yeah. Uh, the other one is occupancy. It's 
it's the offices we're in. Rent. Rent. Rent is, uh, rent is so most rent and every yeah, rent is number two. Everything associated with it. So just what about outside of rent. Right? Everybody um, knows like, rent's in New York City. Like million dollars for really testing in here. I would say the next biggest one is most likely uh, what we call agent related expenses. Yeah. So a lot of that marketing. just like marketing materials. Yeah. Is huge. The signage that goes into how many agents we have as they get the, as they get listings. They got to create signs. They got to create materials. That requires things to get printed. It's literally just a physical it's funny, right? sign. We're, we're a tech company where we're spending now, our biggest expenditure in, in, in still print how, and not, signing. How is signage? that going to change? You know, it's just, <laughs> it just is what it is. Someone has a listing, order. they want some signs. Yeah. And that one challenge that goes into that, imagine how many agents we have that just need a bunch of signs. Right? Yeah. yeah. 13,000 agents <laughs> that need signs. Imagine a small mom and pop sign vendor who isn't really thinking of Compass as a whole, but thinking about their business with that agent. Like, yeah. They're going to send us one invoice per request. Yeah. Now, what that means is we might be getting between 300 and 500 individual invoices from one vendor per month. Oh, boy. And that just data and that, the logistics of what goes into one invoice and how do we make sure to talk to this vendor to say, like, no, please send us one invoice a month for all the signs that were purchased. And they say, no, our system, like, that's too hard. It's, it's a constant struggle. Um, but <laughs> oh so like God, the agent imagine. related expenses, um, which of course we're more than happy to pay because that's the business. Uh, <laughs> that's the business. Uh, but that, yeah, that's, a, a, that's a pretty big part. The, another marketing, like actual compass core marketing, yeah. uh, like what we call corporate marketing, uh, that's, that's a pretty big line on our PL. I mean, let's be honest, they're all pretty big. Uh, but those are, those are some big ones. Here. Um, but so the other project that kind of leads in, um, I, I'm very involved with our. Our accounts payable and AP process okay. as well. And so I'm um, actually, we just, uh, Gisela Crespo left the company for very, like, just natural life move, moving on. I'm stepping in as like a temporary manager for the AP team. And that has a lot to do with just the logistical issues that I'm talking about, with, like dealing with vendors, making sure that we're getting, in, we're paying them on time, but they're also doing things in a way that makes sense for us. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I can only imagine how convoluted things can get with, with uh, agents having their own people that they expect to get paid on time. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right, good, Eduardo. What are you working on right now? What's the uh, what's on the pipeline? Yeah. So my world is kind of two two separate things. So the first is the M and A side. So, and I think everyone's aware we bought Pacific Union, Paragon. We've been buying all these brokerages mm -hmm. the past year. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes into, like, one, valuing what we bought. So when you think about we bought Pacific Union, there's, we bought, like, their offices, you know, the computers, the tables, the chairs that are in there. The staff. Exactly, the staff. The like, rents. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but you'd be surprised. We have to assign a value to what the agents actually need. So there's, like, a complicated, like, math problem. So basically, like, if one agent takes up 25 square feet and they produce 300,000 GCI, right? Is that, is that office, is that, is that kind of? That's, yeah, GCI is respectively, we, is what we're trying to value is we have this population of 2,000 agents. What would someone else out in the market pay for that same population of agents? So it's kind of like we have to do that valuation and actually put that on our, our books and our financials. Right. And so, you know, we didn't have anybody in the company that could do that a year ago. Sure. We had all these acquisitions. And so yeah. now we're working through that, trying to finalize that and everything. How profitable was or is Pacific Union right now as, a, as just them? Themselves? They're definitely a positive impact. They are. Okay. Yeah. Good. And, Good. and then I think more, more importantly, they just add additional market reach. I mean, we're 80, yeah, 80% in San Francisco. Exactly. It's, it's crazy. Exactly. <laughs> it's so <laughs> Them crazy. along with the Lawn Panel, it's just, we own, yeah. that, we own, we own that We own that market. Yeah. 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 So that's the main the main driver of the tech. So go, going back to, I guess, the, the calculations of, like, seeing how profitable they are. If you find a, a, an area of the office that isn't profitable, what do you do? So we, we, try, not, we try not to dive that much, too much into the details. Uh -huh. Um it's like more just the left bigger. side of the San Francisco office is underperforming there's sales, based on... There's a lot of sales managers and stuff who are more responsible for that. So uh -huh. things. We try to keep it big picture when we're sure. doing these valuations. Okay. It's just, you know, it's, it makes it easier for us and then that's all the auditors really care to care to see. So, much more big picture. Um, but then on the, on the M&A side, we also have all these companies that we now have to get their 
like PL, like their revenue and income into our system. Yeah. So if you think about it, we have all our systems, they have all their systems, we have to figure out how to make them talk. Got it. And each month get their results into our results so that Robert and Mael can look at how they're doing as well. How they're doing, right. So that's another part of it. Um, and eventually, you know, we would want to integrate their processes with ours, and so we're not doing two different things separately. Sure. Um, then the other side of it is equity, and that means the administration side of it. So preparing what goes to the board to be approved. Yeah. Um, you think about how much we've grown in the past year. Um, so there's just a lot there, just a lot of new agents, uh, a lot of new employees. Yeah. So being able to manage that. Um, actually issuing the stock options and then the Solium platform. Mm -hmm. um, so we're always looking for ways to make that easier for people to understand. Um, and, you know, grow, figuring out ways for us to grow out our team. So maybe do we potentially want to, similar to how we have uh, support at Compass where that, you know, you reach out to kind of like a, a not necessarily a call center, but like another team to help mm -hmm. us with our IT. Mm -hmm. Do we want to find maybe a similar uh, type service that can help agents understand equity? Because like the equity team at Compass is really for a while just been like one and a half people. That's right now. Yeah. So and were you the ones responding to all the questions? Yeah. It it's me, oh, uh, largely this one guy on my team. Um, so I'm doing a lot of the I'm the first stuff. guy that probably emailed you then the, when we just did our last fundraise. I wanted to know what the, nobody said the dollar per share was based on the view you funding. Every time one of those big emails comes out like with announcements and saying like, if you have any questions, reach out to Equity oh, and gosh. Yeah. We're like, oh, okay, get ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and or like the, when the agent equity program has its enrollment period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You imagine them day and day and night just answering questions so across the country. The issue is you have to get in the contracts then too. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So we're we're working on automating all that and trying to improve. You know. Trying to make it as easy for everybody to understand. Right. Um, so just finding out the best way to do that is tough. And it's, you can't just like find people on the street who know it and talk equity as an expert. So recruiting, you know, the right people on the team it can be tough. It's, yeah, it's important. Yeah, it's important. So, you just got a new guy on the team. Yeah, uh, he's coming from Goldman, right? Uh, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley. Yeah. Yeah, so he was on the client side of like actually like managing for public companies their stock plans mm -hmm. so we brought him over great experience he's going to like manage the Asian equity experience uh -huh. and like focus day and night and just making that better for okay. Asians so that's great to have him on board and, and, and help them out with questions regarding like, eventually if they go IPO I'm sure exactly. things are going to go crazy exactly oh that's good yeah it's going to be nuts yeah. you know, IPO yeah. just trying to convert all that stuff that we've had when do you when do you think that will be Public. I'm gonna you stick know, to the Robert script. Uh, uh, it, it, 18 months is what I think the what Robert has been saying. Has been saying is yeah, 18 months I think he said Rob, Rob's at two years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, once they they'll have to like really set and make an official like date as a goal, and then it's gonna be about bringing in the right people who are gonna. I mean, it, it's it's a massive project, and the, it's not just a finance project. It's gonna be a whole compass wide thing, but right. finance will be the first. Be the first yeah. Finance and legal. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because there's just so many mandates that you have to follow uh, when you're a public company. Okay. And it, it involves a lot of process change. Uh, yeah. it, it's, cool. The challenge at Compass is constantly just, we're moving. I was just, the challenge like, with the equity program and the logistics of invoicing, it's always trying to change the wheels on the bus while the bus is moving, right? Yeah. Like that's constantly... And the bus is moving really, really fast. Yeah. The bus is moving in the, eight, in the 20 markets in the 20, momentum. 20 in 20 regions. Yeah, the yeah. momentum is that's one of the compass cornerstones, right? Move fast. I know we don't have a lot of time, so thank you guys. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you.